Pyre Create is an international project. It's a partnership, really, that focuses both on research and education and focuses on climate change in the Americas. And we're looking at how climate varied in the past. We work with teams in the US, in Brazil, and Argentina, but we also have partners in some other countries, such as Peru and Chile. In the United States, we work with Columbia University, and we have the headquarter of the project here at the University at Albany. Our partners in Brazil, for example, are experts in speleothem research. So they look at stalagmites and extract signals of past climate variability from caves. Our partners in Mendoza and Argentina are experts in tree ring research. So they help us to understand how climate has varied in the past on very high frequency timescales. So it's really a unique opportunity for us to learn from their expertise and use their data to better understand past climate change. Tree ring in the tropics can provide a historical long-term perspective in tree growth variability and forest productivity and land use in these understudied regions. They can also be used as proxies to infer temperature and precipitation variability as well as to reconstruct El Niño Southern Oscillation. One of the reasons why tree rings are an underused archive in the tropics is because historically less resources and less investigations have been conducted there. So uh, recent development of new techniques that improve visualization have opened a new field of opportunities to increase the number of tree species that can be targeted for tree ring studies. Even if we're unable to gain climatic information um, from the tree ring, say if they don't vary in size or width from year to year, we can still get useful information about how old these trees are and provide new information for preservation efforts into forest age, history, and maturity in these new forests that we are studying. When we are exploring caves for paleoclimate purposes, we're looking for evidence of changes in the past. So some of our colleagues are studying mud deposits to look at histories of flooding. And sometimes we're looking for speleothems, which are calcium carbonate deposits. And these are often found in the back of caves where there aren't too many changes in um, temperature or humidity daily. During the last 20 years, I have been searching for caves in different regions in Brazil and also other countries in South America, Bolivia, Peru, uh, Colombia, and also Argentina. Our goal is trying to reconstruct the patterns of uh, precipitation during the last 3,000 years in high resolution. And you have noticed that during the last four decades, uh, the climate has been uh, getting more drier uh, and they have a depth in, in the water recharge and the depth in water supply in uh, central Brazil and those uh, findings uh, are also be served in uh, three rings from the same area so you are able to combine a uh, split terms and three rings to tell that uh, the, the dry period that have been observed in modern times has not been seen the last 1,000 years. And this could be used as one of the main evidence that the global warming in, in vast areas in South America is impacting the uh, natural water resources in Brazil. As part of the program, I've been able to travel to South America to see some of the sites where these natural archives are from. This gives me a much deeper insight into how the natural archives are formed, and I can better utilize the data from those records in comparison with the climate model. So the ability to work with the natural archive and work with observations hands-on is pretty unique, and I don't know a lot of other climate modelers that have gotten to hold samples that they then compare to their climate models. It's been really special. It's really important to train the next generation of scientists, young students, get them excited about science, retain them in STEM fields. 
So PIER allows us to include students, postdocs, early career scientists, to learn to collaborate across different disciplines and that are comfortable working in an international setting. So the PIER Academies were a collaborative effort between PIs, postdocs, students, to create this interactive curriculum with hands-on training experiences in both the lab and the field to provide kind of an immersive opportunity to get students excited about the science and conducting science on their own and increase our hands-on involvement and in scientific communication within local communities that we work in. And by increasing our open-ended conversations and uh, we can perhaps provide more informed decision-making uh, together as a team working into the future. I've had the great opportunity of being able to go out in tree core or go out and actually see the caves in Brazil. And that has broadened my perspective of what paleoclimate research is. And I think it's very important to learn about what's happening with past climates because these will have impacts on how we live and how our societies and how our ecosystems function. And a lot of these impacts are very detrimental. And so learning how to prevent or prepare for these changes is extremely important and something all humans should care about. The ability to look deep back in time and understand how the climates varied over the last 1,000 years creates a, a much better sense of the true natural variability of the climate system, um, volcanic forcing, solar forcings, and how these things have changed in the past. It gives us a bigger window of fluctuation against which many modern changes can be compared. And based on our understanding of the past, we know that the climate we see now is something that we've never seen before, and we really do live in a kind of new climate era.